Thousands of years ago, people around the world discovered that their bonfires had the power to harden earth into permanent form. As they settled into villages and began to farm the land around them, they learned to shape clay into useful containers to carry water and to store food and seeds. Archaeologists have discovered fragments of the world's oldest pottery, produced more than 12,000 years ago in Japan. Ever since this early beginning, Asia has been the wellspring of ceramic innovations admired around the globe. The shapes of the earliest pots reflected people's basic needs. Three legs on this Chinese cooking pot allowed it to straddle a fire, helping to heat the contents of the pot. Many ancient pots have survived because they were made specifically for burial. People who wanted to honor deceased family members placed ceramic pots and other goods in their graves prior to being entombed. Others were placed in tombs of rulers and other high-ranking people in the belief that they would need them in the next world. Chinese potters created these elegant cups, thin as eggshells, over 4,000 years ago. Ancient Koreans placed row upon row of bowls like this one, once filled with food in their tombs. Things too big or impractical to put in the tomb appeared as clay models, pig pens to provide meat in the next world, musicians and dancers to entertain, watchtowers and guardians to protect. The tradition of supplying tombs with goods for the afterlife lasted for centuries in China and neighboring regions. In Japan, ceramic figures called haniwa stood on and around the earthen tomb mounds of rulers, protecting the dead who were inside. This woman is probably a shaman or healer, and this sturdy horse would have accompanied a group of clay warriors. The earliest pots and clay figurines were earthenware. That's what we call pottery baked at a relatively low temperature. But earthenware pottery is easily broken and porous, allowing liquid to slowly seep through its walls. Around 6,000 years ago, potters discovered that they could better control the heat of a fire by constructing kilns, or ovens, in which to bake or fire their vessels. Over time, they learned to build kilns on a hillside, allowing air to rush upwards through the kiln, fanning the flames and making them burn hotter. The hotter the flame, the harder the pot. At temperatures above 1,200 degrees Celsius, particles in the clay bond together to form stoneware. Stoneware does not break as easily as earthenware, and it is less porous, making it better suited to hold liquids. Potters discovered new ways to shape and decorate their pots as well. The fast-turning wheel began to be used in China around 5,000 years ago, not long after the same discovery was made in Egypt and the Near East. Using the wheel, potters could quickly make thinner, lighter, more evenly formed pots that were often much more elegantly shaped. Potters also learned to seal their wares with glaze. The earliest glazed vessels had a thin greenish glaze made by dissolving ash and water and brushing it onto the pot's surface. In the intense heat of the kiln, the ash melted and fused with the surface of the clay pot. Glaze made pots better containers for liquids and also produced a pleasingly shiny surface. Potters in China's Han Dynasty added copper oxide to their glaze compounds to give their ceramic tomb sculptures and vessels a beautiful grassy green color. As early as the 7th century, artisans of the Tang Dynasty created spectacularly colorful tomb sculptures by glazing them with san sai, literally three colors of glaze. In the heat of the kiln, the glazes melted and ran together, creating a mottled effect that was highly prized. Between the 5th and 10th centuries, the most prevalent type of glazed ceramic for daily use in China was called yue ware. The yue glaze could be brown, olive-colored, or bluish-green. Under imperial patronage, Chinese potters of the Song Dynasty improved their kilns and firing techniques and experimented with many new materials. As a result, Song glazed ceramics became famous throughout Asia. Sung potters succeeded in creating a wide range of glazes, including the warm ivory color of dingware, the pale blue of qingpai ware, rich purple splashes on junware, transparent greens on yaozhou ware, and the lustrous blacks of fujian ware. 
Chinese potters were not the only Asian artisans to produce prized glazed ceramics. Korean potters in the 10th century became so adept at achieving a beautiful blue-green glaze that the Chinese themselves called their lustrous wares the first under heaven. In addition to specialized glazes, Chinese potters also decorated their wares by carving the surface of the clay. After glazing, the carved patterns showed through the glaze to beautiful effect. At other times, potters covered their ware with a coating of lighter clay called slip. By scratching or carving through the slip to the darker clay below, they could create bold, precisely rendered designs. The most important and far-reaching innovation in Asian ceramics was the technique of painting porcelain clay with a blue pigment derived from the mineral cobalt. The potter's intricate designs in rich cobalt blue against the white porcelain became enormously popular. In the mid-14th century, Chinese potters exported large bowls and platters to patrons in Iran, Turkey, and India, so their designs often reflected the Middle Eastern taste for dense, complex patterns and fancy foliate rims. As the popularity of blue and white porcelain spread throughout Asia, potters in other countries adopted the technology and produced designs that reflected their own style and tastes. This large dragon vase from Korea illustrates their preference for a looser, more painterly approach in applying cobalt designs. Vietnamese potters were also impressed by Chinese blue and white ceramics and skillfully reflected that taste in their own ware. Chinese artisans also developed the technique of applying additional colors to porcelain. By experimenting with a variety of minerals and metallic oxides, Chinese potters were soon able to decorate their wares with a dazzling spectrum of colors. The delicate pink color of the blossoms on this branch, for example, is a result of adding specially processed gold to the enamel mixture. When Chinese production of decorated porcelain diminished during the 17th century, Dutch traders turned to Japan to supply works for the European market. At the same time that the Japanese were creating fancily decorated works for export, they also developed an appreciation for more simply produced earthenware and stoneware vessels. These humble, sometimes misshapen objects they felt possessed a quiet, unassuming beauty that accorded well with the somber atmosphere of their tea ceremonies. The Japanese came to prize the accidental effects of the kiln including drips, fire marks, and even minor damage that occurred in the kiln's stormy atmosphere. Asian cultures have always appreciated ceramics, both for their usefulness and for their beauty. Whether historically based or avant-garde, such works represent the enduring importance of ceramics in Asia.